All right, uh, let's take a look at this uh, chapter here. Uh, this chapter is about the uh, residual income model. Uh, uh, this is an accounting model, so we're going to see a lot of uh, expressions and terms in accounting. Uh, let me show you how to uh, how to uh, learn uh, this model. Well, the first thing you need to understand is uh, is the meaning of residual income, right? When you see the word residual, what do you think about? Uh, basically, uh, a, resi a residual is uh, something uh, remaining or something that is left, right? So uh, what does it mean financially? Uh, residual income is a net income less a charge or deduction for common shareholders opportunity cost in generating uh, net income. So if you notice on the income statement, uh, we recognize the interest expense, right? If the company is borrowing, they have to pay interest. And the, the cost of borrowing, which is the interest expense, is recognized explicitly. Right? You can see uh, an interest expense on the income statement. It's very clear. So basically, you recognize the cost of borrowing or the cost of debt. Right. On the other hand, if you think about this carefully, equity is also costly, right? But for some reason, the cost of equity is not recognized uh, in the income statement. So the idea behind this model is that you have to compute the residual income. And the residual income is just net income, uh, which has taken into account the, the cost of borrowing, but it hasn't uh, included the cost of equity. Right, so when you get, uh, uh, if you want to find the residual income, it has to be net income minus uh, the equity uh, charge or equity deduction, right? So that's the idea behind uh, uh, residual income. Now, uh, this concept has become more popular more recently because uh, it has been used as a valuation approach and also it has some commercial uh, commercial applications as well. Uh, this is one of the most uh, uh, well-known uh, names. This is what we call the EVA, or Economic Value Added. Well, the next question is, uh, now that you understand the meaning of residual income, the question is how do you apply this concept? Well, there are a couple of applications. Uh, first of all, you can use this concept to measure uh, internal corporate performance, right? You look at uh, internal performance. Second, you can uh, employ this model to estimate the intrinsic value of uh, common stock. So for this class and for this chapter, we're going to focus on the residual income model for valuation of common stock. Okay, so this is what I just mentioned earlier that uh, uh, a net income does reflect the cost of debt, but it doesn't reflect the cost of uh, equity. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, uh, sentence here. Traditional financial statements are prepared to reflect earnings available to owners. Net income includes an expense to represent the cost of debt, uh, debt capital, which is the interest expense. Uh, dividends or other charges for equity capital are not deducted. Okay, traditional accounting leaves to the owners the, determ the d determination as to whether the resulting earnings are sufficient to meet the cost of equity capital. So this is this is precisely what I just uh, uh, mentioned to you that the cost of borrowing or the interest expense is explicitly recognized, but the cost of equity capital is not included in the income statement, which is a little, you know, uh, unexpected. Uh, so uh, the economic concept of residual income explicitly considers the cost of equity capital. Well, let's take a look at this uh, simple example here. Uh, Axis Manufacturing Company, AMC, has total assets of two million uh, pounds. 
finance 50% with debt and 50% with equity capital. The cost of debt capital is 7% pre-tax or 4.9% after tax, and the cost of equity capital is 12%. Net income for this company can be determined as follows. Okay, so this is one section of the income statement, and if you begin with the EBIT or earnings before interest and taxes, which is $200,000, right? And then you subtract the interest expense, which is $70,000, you get the pre-tax income, which is $130,000, right? And then you subtract the income tax expense, which is thirty nine thousand dollars so the net income for this company is ninety one uh, thousand uh, pounds actually I should I should have said pounds not US dollars but anyway uh, so the question is what is the residual income for this company so what we can do is we can compute the cost of equity capital uh, we call this the uh, an equity charge and then we subtract uh, this from net income, right? So equity charge is equal to equity capital times the cost of equity capital in uh, percent. So you know that this company has a total uh, has a total assets of two, mil, uh, 2 million pounds, right? And 50% of them are financed by uh, debt and the other 50% by equity. So you know that uh, the amount of equity in this company is 50% of 2 million, which is 1 million, right? So you have the amount of equity capital, which is 1 million. The question is, how much does it cost the stockholders uh, for the company to uh, to uh, to to employ <clears throat> to employ this uh, equity capital? And it's 12%. The cost of equity is twelve percent, and the company is uh, using one uh, one million uh, pounds. So the equity charge is twelve times the amount of equity capital, and you get one hundred twenty thousand dollars, right? So uh, net income here is ninety one thousand uh, pounds, right? And then you subtract the equity charge, which is one twenty. You end up with the uh, with a residual income of uh, minus twenty nine thousand dollars. So it's a negative number. So the conclusion is this company did not earn enough to cover the cost of equity. As a result, it has negative residual income. Okay, uh, residual income has a few other names. Uh, for example, residual income has also been called economic profit because it represents the economic profit of the firm after deducting the cost of all capital, both debt and equity. So this is uh, another name uh, for residual income, economic profit. Also the term abnormal, abnormal earnings is also used assuming that over the long term the firm is expected to earn its cost of capital any earnings in excess of the cost of capital can be uh, termed abnormal earnings also there is one commercial application of this concept uh, this is what we call the eva or the economic value added uh, this concept was invented by uh, stern and stewart and company and the EVA is computed as uh, NOPAT or net operating profit after taxes uh, minus uh, TC is uh, total capital and C is the cost of capital. Okay, so this is one uh, commercial application of, of this concept. So when you see any of these uh, terms, please understand that they have a very uh, similar meaning as uh, it has a si very similar meaning to uh, residual income. Also, there is another concept, which is what we call the MVA, uh, market value added. Over time, a firm must generate uh, economic value added in order to add market value to the firm. So a related concept is what we call the MVA, which is the market value of the firm minus the total capital. 
So it, this is a very similar concept as well. Uh, commercial models similar to EVA and MVA are in use by other major accounting and consulting firms. So uh, just want to let you know that this concept has uh, some commercial ap applications as well. It's not just academic, but it also has some commercial applications. All right, let's come back to uh, valuation, right? Residual income model of valuation. In this model, the residual income model, or what we call RIM, RIM, uh, the intrinsic value of the firm has two components. The first component is the current book value of equity, right? And then the second component is the present value of future residual income. Okay, mathematically, you can take a look at this equation here. The current price, stock price, is equal to the current book value, right? You begin with the current book value, and then you keep adding the residual income in each of the following years and then you add uh, you discount the residual income in each year to present and then you add add each term to the book value and you get the total right uh, alternatively you can look at this equation in a different way so instead of having a, a residual income over here you can write it down as uh, e T minus R B T minus one, right? E is uh, earnings, so it's uh, earnings minus R is the cost of uh, equity, and B is the book value equity, right? So that's how you d determine the uh, residual income in each period. Okay, so here are the, de the definitions. B zero is the current book value of equity. B T is the book value of equity at time T, you know, sometime in the future. RIT is a residual income in future periods. R is a required rate of return on equity. ET is net income or earnings during period T. And you have uh, uh, residual income is equal to earnings minus the product of the cost of equity and the book value of equity. Uh, right now, it may look a little intimidating, but when I show you a few examples, uh, it will be much more uh, understandable. Okay, let's begin with something uh, simple. Uh, valuing a perpetuity with the uh, residual income model. A company will earn $1 per share forever, and the company also pays out all of this as dividends. $1 per share. The equity capital invested, or the book value is $6 per share. Because the earnings and dividends will offset each other, the future book value of the stock will always stay at uh, six dollars. So the required rate of return on equity, or the percent cost of equity, is ten percent. The first question is calculate the value of this stock using the dividend discount model. Second, what will be the residual income each year? Calculate the value of the stock using a residual income valuation model. And number three, create a table summarizing the recognition of value in the dividend discount model and the residual income model. So this is a very simple example just to demonstrate to you that it doesn't matter if you use the residual income model or the dividend discount model, you should reach the same conclusion. All right, let's take a look at the solution to problem number one. Uh, because the dividend is a perpetuity, right? Because you assume the company will keep paying one dollar uh, every year, so this is a perpetuity. And the formula for a perpetuity is very straightforward. It's just d uh, divided by the cost of equity. So it's one divided by ten percent. So it's ten dollars per share. So the cost of, uh, I mean, the stock value. Uh, based on the uh, dividend discount model is $10 per share. Uh, solution number two, the net income is $1 each year. The book value is always $6, and the required return is 10%. So what you have to do is you have to compute the residual income in every year, right? So uh, you know that uh, earnings uh, or net income is $1, and then you know that the cost of equity is 
and the book value remains constant at six dollars right because the book value doesn't change because w whenever you have uh, net income you distribute uh, you distribute uh, your earnings to the stockholders so the payout uh, ratio is a hundred percent and that's why the book value doesn't change over time so you have this expression here one dollar minus zero point one zero times six and you get a residual income of uh, 40 cents right now according to the residual income model what you have to do is you begin with the book value of equity which is six dollars plus the present value of of all the residual income going forward in time and you know that each year this company will generate a residual income of 40 cents right so it go, it's going forward in time forever so this is a perpetuity it has to be uh, 40 cents divided by 0 0.1 and you get uh, four dollars four plus six which is the book value equity and you get ten so the purpose of this example is to show you that it doesn't really matter if you apply the dividend discount model or the residual income model as long as your assumptions are consistent then you get the same answer 10 percent here i'm sorry ten dollars here and ten dollars here okay let's continue with this example here if you look at this table if you apply the dividend discount model right you assume that the company will generate a dividend of one dollar every year forever when you discount each each dividend back to present you get the total value which is ten dollars on the other hand if you apply the residual income model what you do is you begin with the book value of equity which is six dollars right and then you know that this company will generate a residual income of uh, 40 cents every year into the future indefinitely so when you discount each residual income back to present you get the following uh, values and then you add up everything and you get ten dollars so it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter which model you are using you end up with the same conclusion anyway okay so uh, in this uh, uh, slide uh, if you compare the residual income model with other uh, discounted cash flow models you can see that uh, conceptually they're not that different okay they are very similar however there is one uh, well there are two critical differences the first uh, difference is the timing of the recognition of value uh, forecasting of future dividends and cash flows is often uh, challenging so uh, one advantage of the residual income model is that the timing of the recognition of value uh, is in the beginning right so uh, if you apply the dividend discount model you can see that most of the value is in the terminal value right on the other hand if you apply the residual income model most of the value lies in the book value of equity in the beginning and obviously it's easier to uh, to know the current book value than it is to predict uh, future cash flows you know into the future many years from now so this is one advantage of the residual income model the timing of the recognition of value it's upfront most of the value is upfront instead of uh, uh, in the terminal uh, in the terminal stage uh, terminal value um, uh, we're going to have more discussion about this later but you can see that in many contexts the terminal value is uh, considered to be zero uh, and obviously the determination of book value today is much easier than the determination of a terminal value 10 or 20 years uh, from now well the question is under what circumstances would the residual income model be most appropriate uh, well uh, this model is appropriate for the following uh, situations uh, first of all if the firm is not paying dividends or if it exhibits an unpredictable dividend pattern 
Okay, so obviously if it's not paying dividends, you cannot apply the dividend discount model. Or even if it's paying dividends, if you have a reason to believe that the dividend pattern doesn't reflect the underlying uh, profitability, then you cannot use the dividend discount model. So one alternative to the dividend discount model is the residual income model. Okay. Second, if the firm has negative free cash flow for many years, but the firm is expected to generate positive cash flows at some point in time, uh, for example, a young or rapidly growing firm uh, where capital expenditures are being made to fuel future growth. Okay, so when you're dealing with companies uh, where uh, the free cash flow is negative, then you can apply the residual income model. Okay. Finally, when there is a great deal of uncertainty in forecasting terminal values, right? When it's difficult to uh, predict uh, uh, cash flows or terminal values, then you can apply the residual income model. Okay, let's take a look at the derivation of the residual income model. You begin with the dividend discount model, right? And the uh, dividend discount model is very simple. Basically, it's just the present value of all the dividends going forward in time, right? So you begin with this equation here, D1 discounted back, D2 discounted back, D3, so on and so forth. Now, in accounting, you have to understand the meaning of clean surplus clean surplus. Uh, this is an accounting relationship and you can express this relationship as BT is equal to BT minus 1 plus ET minus DT. So basically the book value at time T is the book is equal to the book value in the previous period, right? BT minus 1 plus uh, uh, the earnings in the current period and the dividend in the current period minus the dividend in the current period. So it's very simple. You begin with the book value in the beginning, right? And then you add whatever earnings uh, you make in the current period. Then you subtract the distribution to the stockholders, which is the dividend right here. And you end up with the book value at the end of the period. This is what we call the uh, clean surplus relationship. Okay, from here, if you rearrange the variables, you get uh, dt is equal to et minus uh, bt minus bt minus 1 in parentheses, right? Uh, if you re do some rearranging, you get the following uh, uh, expression here, okay? And then you do some uh, uh, substitution. So instead of having d1, you replace d1 with e1 plus b0 minus b1, so on and so forth. And uh, finally, you get the following uh, simplified equation. Uh, we have seen this equation before. The uh, stock price is equal to the uh, book value, the current book value, plus the summation of uh, the present values of all the residual uh, income in the future. Right, RI is residual income, and you can see when you determine the residual income in each period, it has to be discounted back to present, right? That's why you have this one plus R to the teeth power. And then you know that the residual income is equal to uh, earnings, or ET, minus the cost of uh, equity times the book value equity in the beginning. So this is the final uh, formula here. Alternatively, the uh, residual income model can be expressed as, and you see this equation, right? It's uh, First of all, what you can do is you can find a difference between the return on equity minus the cost of uh, equity. And then when you get a difference, you multiply the difference by the book value in the beginning of the period, and then you discount the residual income back to present, right? So it's equivalent to the previous example, uh, previous equation, but it's just an alternative, but mathematically it's the same. So you can express this relationship as uh, the residual income in at, at time t is equal to the difference between the return on equity and the cost of equity times the book value in the beginning. 
the idea is very simple. If your company is more profitable, if the profitability is higher than the cost of equity, then you have a positive residual income, right? On the other hand, if your company is making only just as much as the cost of equity, then the residual income is zero. And then if your company is making less, less than the cost of equity, you would have a negative uh, residual income here.